for all of our guests. Join us on the Bud Light guest line. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy, as is ESPN's Tim Legler. Nice enough to join us here on the Bud Light guest line. Tim, thank you very much. Damon and Ratto with you this afternoon. It's a pleasure to have you on. Uh, thank you for joining us today. As you look at the Golden State Warriors, even knowing that Steph Curry is going to miss the next handful of weeks due to this knee injury, <coughs> do you think that they are going to change whatever they might have done here at the trade deadline? They really can't do much. When you look at all the assets they've put on the table to get deals done over the years, uh, do you think Curry's injury changes their approach at all? Um, I don't think it's going to be ultimately because of what you just said. They're handcuffed to a certain extent. Um, they don't have a lot of flexibility with what they actually can do. And I think you know, th their thinking is going to be, because everybody is so tightly packed together in the West, if they can just somehow, somehow hold their head above water and play close to 500 basketball while he's out, then you get him back for the stretch run. And look, one thing that happens after guys do have these types of injuries, they come back with fresh legs. We've seen it time and time again. Steph Curry's gone through this before himself coming back at the right time of year and you get this rest where you're not you're not pounding every night and it's amazing the kind of adrenaline you can bring to the table for a stretch run and, and be somewhere so you avoid the play in and give yourself a realistic shot to come out of the West because I just don't think they believe anybody has really separated themselves out there that they couldn't beat in a seven-game series. So I don't think they're going to overreact or panic because of this. So there's no doubt the best friend of the Golden State Warriors has been a completely middling Western Conference the entire way so far. But when your own naked eyes hit this basketball team, Tim, do your eyes tell you that they can honestly really contend for an NBA championship or just contend in a playoff appearance? No, I, I think they can contend in the Western Conference. I believe it. Um, it obviously, defensive numbers have been pretty alarming. I'm much more concerned about that than anything else offensively. I think that, to me, getting Clay Thompson back close to the level he was at you know at his peak which which he has been now for for over a month it's a great sign for them that to me was the key indicator if they were going to have a chance because if he was going to continue to struggle be inconsistent or just you know some nights really really play poorly the way he did for stretches this year i just didn't see how they could possibly generate enough to come out of the west considering you know it's, it's more difficult to guard people than ever so you have to outscore them some nights uh, that's not the case. I think he looks great, and that to me is much more important than, than some of these other issues that I think I can attribute to really a monotony of the regular season for a team that's been to six finals. I just don't think there's a pressing urgency for a team that's had this many two-month extra runs at the end of the season. So uh, you're going to see that urgency kick in when it needs to. I'm not saying, look, I'm not predicting they're going to win it all. I did before the year. I said they'd repeat. That obviously is, is a much tougher prediction to stick with. But I'm not ready to bail on them and say this team's going to be, you know, out of the play-in, or they're going to be, you know, eliminated in the first round by a Denver or a Memphis or, you know, a Sacramento, whoever they end up getting in the first round. I, I just don't think that that's reasonable to think that they have no chance to win that series. And if they win the series, now you've got a serious threat on your hands. Um, you re you alluded to it earlier, which was that the Western Conference after the Kings is essentially a hot mess, separated by two games from top to nearly bottom. Does the Kyrie Irving deal put Dallas out of that group and into that group of the top three, which would become four, or does it really materially affect where they, you know, whether they get out of that mess or not? I mean, the, do they become dramatically better or just dramatically different? I think based on the reaction today, and I'm on the air all day on all the different platforms, you know, with ESPN, talking about this, a lot of different people are debating it. I think I'm more skeptical than some other people um, that this is going to ultimately work out for Dallas and, and be more than a team that's eliminated in the first round because I think that's where they're headed. Kyrie Irving addresses, you know, this glaring hole of lack of offense when Luka's out of the game. Uh, because he dominates the ball to such an extent when he's in there and they lost Galen and Brunson, they have no way to generate offense if he's not on the floor. And the numbers are really incredible, the difference between – the offensive rating when he's on the quarter off. Um, so they, they, they press that. Now they can always have one star scorer on the floor at all times. So that, that helps. I'm more worried about what happens when they play together and the extent to which Luka dominates the ball and how exactly that's going to affect Kyrie Irving and his ability to get rid of and vice versa. Luka doesn't give the ball up early like LeBron did when he played with LeBron and Kyrie. 
Luca holds the ball deep into the clock. And when he passes it, he expects a shot to be taken, whether it's a three or a lob, a pocket pass. It's not like he's giving it up early in the clock and letting guys go. Um, that's not the way he plays, and I think that's going to affect Kyrie. So I'm not quite ready to go there. Yet. They'll be better offensively. They'll be significantly worse defensively uh, with those two guys on the court together. And and I think all that's going to add up to eventually a first-round playoff loss. But, look, without having seen him play one game, it's sort of premature to predict anything. i got to see it for a month. Tim Legler from ESPN here on 95.7 The Game. It's great to have him on. We're just kind of resetting his phone line there since it's a touch garbled. And he doesn't have much time for us today because, as he said, he's going through the ESPN car wash where he's basically appearing on every channel, every outlet that they actually have. Uh, do we have Tim back? I believe we do. Before we let you go, because I know you got a busy afternoon in front of you, uh, what do you think of Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets right now do you think that in some ways KD is relieved that this chapter is over with? Is he angry that he's stuck held, you know, holding the bag kind of on his own? Or is he looking around this locker room and thinking, this might actually be better than when Kyrie was here? Yeah, I think right now he's probably, there's no question, has to be a sense of relief um, of not having to deal with this on a, on a you know, periodic basis in the time, the three and a half years they've been together. Because it's been nonstop drama. And I'm sure there is a sense of relief there for him with that. Um, now, he's going to enjoy the guys they got back, and I think it's going to be a situation where he's going to it's his team when he comes back. They've added some really, really good, impactful role players. Uh, they're going to be better defensively than they were before. Um, they're going to build their offense, obviously, completely around him. But I do think, ultimately, he's going to look at the top of the East and realize – they're not going to be able to contend now with Philly, Boston, Milwaukee. They're not on that level. And I think when you look at the way Kyrie played over the last month, it was the best stretch he had as a net. It was He looked engaged. He looked locked in. He looked committed to the team and thought about his teammates for once, like being accountable to them. And but when KD comes back, man, this, this team actually could win the Eastern Conference. So you go from that on Thursday thinking that to here we are on Monday, and I think Kevin Durant's going to find out when he comes back they don't have a chance to win the Eastern Conference, and that's going to lead probably to something else happening over the summer. Um, this is an oddball question given the history of the last decade and a half, but how real is Sacramento as a as a Western Conference contender? I mean, they're they're going to make the playoffs. They Right now, it's pretty safe to say they're probably going to win the division, but how deep do they look to you to, to get to a conference final or maybe maybe even cheat the Reaper and get to a final? Yeah, look, they're, they're, they've been, I think, maybe the best story team-wise in the NBA this year. Uh, they are so far ahead of what I thought their ceiling was with this group. Give Mike Brown all the credit in the world um, and, and, and Sabonis as well for the impact that he's had. Darren De'Aaron Fox has had a great year. They're just a fun team. They put up big numbers. They, they get great contributions from the supporting cast around those two guys every night. Here's the Here's, here's, where, here's where it's not such a great thing for them um, looking ahead to the playoffs. you got three teams that are lurking right now. It's sort of like below the Mendoza line. When you look at Golden State, you look at Dallas, and you look at the Clippers, Okay, where Kawhi Leonard is starting to find his rhythm, and he's putting up numbers every night. And if those guys could ever stay healthy together, you know, if you're the Kings, and you potentially end up with one of those teams in the first round of the playoffs, the city Golden State is healthy. The Clippers are healthy and Dallas is healthy. I don't know anybody out there that's going to predict the Kings to win the series. And that's why all of this, hey, look, it's, it's a good team. It's a good story. But unfortunately for them, you've got some teams that have underachieved that I think could have great finishes, could make Sacramento first round out. Tim Legler, in a world of hot air, you're a cool breeze, man. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. I appreciate it, gentlemen. Anytime. There he is. Again, nobody on the text line. Likes anything. But as soon as I said Tim Legler's coming on, there's an overwhelming amount of, I like Tim Legler. In a world of screamers, he's not one. You're right. He's an actual analyst. He is not a hot take artist. He's just here to talk basketball. I like Tim Legler an awful lot.